Assalamu alaikum viewers please like share and subscribe this channel links of pdf files used in this video are given in description so today's lecture is about practical demonstration of estimation of bromides by argentometric titration and in this particular titration we will adopt adsorption indicator method so today's lecture is about argentometric titration between silver nitrate and bromide so the question of this titration is to determine amount per liter of kbr or potassium bromide in a given sample solution volumetrically you are provided with 0.025 molar silver nitrate as standard solution so in this particular titration kbr or potassium bromide is our analyte whereas 0.025 molar silver nitrate is our standard solution it is not only standard solution but it is titrant and is also used as precipitating agent so these titrations are called as argentometric titrations because of the presence of silver nitrate because in latin word silver means argentum so from there the name comes argentometric titrations argentometric titrations can be performed by a number of ways but in this particular titration we are adopting the method of adsorption indicator so what this method does that in this method we used an indicator which is adsorbed on the surface of silver ions physically and then it gives its color which is the end point of this titration so basically it is a precipitation titration so silver nitrate is acting not only as a titrant but precipitating agent while kbr and particularly bromide ions will act as analyte so eosine is used as an indicator in this titration mostly in acidic environment we use eosine as an indicator so pink color precipitates are formed which is the end point of this titration the pink color is slightly dark and it is purple in uh, purple in shade so how this dark pink color appears it is formed by physical adsorption of eosine dye on silver ions so again that is why swirling of flask rather than shaking is instructed in this titration in order to promote physical adsorption of dye actually we will see forward in this titration that layers are formed and in order to promote layers we do swirling of flask rather than shaking and in this swirling of flask layers are formed and these layers promote physical adsorption of eosine dye on silver ions so this is the experimental setup of this titration we will take silver nitrate which is standard solution and also a titrant and a precipitating agent we will take it in burette whereas in flask we will take 10 ml of sample solution which definitely will contain bromide ions and then we will add eosine indicator uh, this particular titration is performed in acidic environment so the ph of this solution should be acidic in nature so as we add eosine indicator in this flask the color change into uh, this brownish color tone which is the color of eosine however when we drop certain drops of silver nitrate from top into the flask uh, you will see here that color starts to shift and a pinkish and a purple shade started to appear in this titration so still the end point has not reached but the purple and dark pink coloration is started to form so why this color shifts from this clear brown to a cloudy nature because as we add silver nitrate so silver nitrate will react with kbr so the product formed is silver bromide so the cloudiness in this titration flask is due to the formation of silver bromide ppts but certain silver nitrate molecules react with eosine and due to this the color appears into this uh, purple and dark pink shade so this is the structure of eosine and it has a very much identical structure with fluorescein just the difference is of these bromide ions 
these bromide ions are absent in fluorescein while these are present in eosine indicator this is also a fluorescent dye and these dyes, dyes perform the phenomena of fluorescence because of this extensive conjugation along with presence of certain groups these groups enhance this conjugation further so this is also uh, a fluorescent dye as just like fluorescein now after swirling the flask we have reached the end point finally and uh, if we see here that uh, the cloudy nature is further shifted into more clear solution uh, with formation of dark pink with purple uh, precipitates and these precipitates are formed due to the silver uh, and eosine complex so this is the end point of this titration and uh, at this stage we will stop further addition of silver nitrate from burette into the flask now this slide describes the whole chemistry behind this adsorption indicator method of argentometric titration and here we are seeing here that a uh, layers are formed and now we will see one by one how these layers are explaining the reaction mechanism of this titration so this is the first stage of titration when we have added uh, only certain drops of silver nitrate into the flask so in the flask as kbr is present so silver nitrate will react with kbr to form the silver bromide precipitates these precipitates are gathered in the center whereas its external sides the layers are formed due to the swirling of flask so this first layer around the silver bromide precipitates is of bromide which is called as primary adsorption layer whereas this secondary layer is of potassium ions which is called as secondary adsorption layer so as still kbr outside of this uh, precipitates and in the flask is present in excess so that is why the bromide and potassium ions are present in excess around the precipitates now the question is why bromide is making the primary layer whereas potassium is making the secondary layer the reason is that due to the common ion fact sodium bromide hmm, uh, is present inside in the form of particles so outside is kbr so first layer will be of matching ions and this matching is due to the common ion fact of bromide so that is why the bromide will make the primary layer whereas the potassium will make the secondary layer so this was the first stage when we have uh, dropped um, uh, a few drops of uh, silver nitrate from the burette after then we have reached the second stage which is the equivalence point at this point all the silver bromide is precipitated and is present in the center in the form of particles now all the kbr has been converted into silver bromide so uh, we will drop extra uh, silver nitrate uh, amyls from the burette then the external of these precipitates will be silver nitrate in excess again silver is making a primary adsorption layer whereas nitrate ions is making a secondary adsorption layer the reason is again the due to the common ion fact as silver bromide contains silver as common ion so silver will be making a first layer and then nitrates ions will be making a secondary adsorption layer so these layers are formed due to the swirling that is why we are instructed to swirl the flask rather than to shake so that these layers are formed so this is the equivalence point stage of this titration this is the third stage of this titration which is the end point of this titration so again as we are swirling the flask so silver bromide is present in the center the first layer will be of silver ions and second layer will be of nitrate ions in the solution as we have added eosine as we swirl the flask so there is a chance that eosine comes in the second adsorption layer and it will physically adsorb on the surface of silver ions so as it is adsorbed on the surface of silver ions the whole solution turns into dark pink or uh, dark pink color precipitates with the tinge of purple color 
so this purple coloration and dark green coloration is formed due to this complex between the eocene and silver and in this the eocene is physically adsorbed on the silver ions so that is why we call it this titration as uh, we are carrying out by uh, adsorption indicator method so in this way the dye eocene is adsorbed on silver ions so this is the end point of this titration so next stage is the recording of observations and doing calculation so we will take three readings so we are seeing here that we have taken three readings and the mean volume of silver nitrate used from burette is about 15 ml so on one side we will write silver nitrate on other side we will write kbr and we are using molarity formula so this is the m1 which is 0 0.025 of silver nitrate and this value of m1 is given in the question v1 is the volume used of silver nitrate which we have taken from these concordant readings m2 we want to find whereas this v2 which is 10 ml this is the amount of potassium bromide which we have taken in the flask n1 is equal to n2 and that is 1 is to 1 because one molecule of silver nitrate is reacting with one uh, molecule of potassium bromide so we have to find m2 so m2 is uh, calculated by rearranging uh, these two equations so after solving this equation the answer is 0 0.0375 uh, this is the molarity of kbr so in order to find the amount per liter of bromide ions we will multiply this molarity with the atomic weight of bromide which is 9.9 so the answer comes 2.996 gram per liter of bromide so in order to find the amount per liter of potassium bromide we will multiply this molarity with the formula weight of potassium bromide which is 119 so the answer is 4.462 gram per liter so the overall result of this titration is that the given sample solution contains actually 4.462 gram per liter of potassium bromide so this was all about today's titration i hope you have well understood this lecture and practical demonstration uh, but still if you have queries in your mind let me know in the comment section i will respond to your queries as soon as possible okay thank you allah hafiz